Hello everyone. So today we have brought to you a very special interview of one of our very special client. They have done a project which is called Cambridge Hardware. It's a wearable ECG devices incorporated with artificial intelligence. So let's not discuss further. Let's see the video interview that we have been able to capture online with our clients. Let us look at the video and see how amazing their product is. Thank you. Hello everybody, uh, we have done an amazing mobile application for our uh, yeah, Dr. Ramin Shakur and wanted to introduce with him. Uh, Dr. Ramin Shakur is a cardiologist and academic uh, at the University of Cambridge, UK, who is the first Bangladeshi to have a company with artificial intelligence and, and medical heart devices. He is currently uh, the Janssen uh, Chair uh, for Cardiology Personalized Medicine Regenerative at the Massachusetts University, uh, uh, Massachusetts uh, uh, Institute of Technology, MIT, uh, in Boston, USA. Dr. Shakur and his brainchild the idea for building an innovative real time wearable device uh, for the most accurate heart function was honored uh, in the first company World Changing Ideas 2019. Uh, it was named uh, the top five. Uh, most disruptive health tech companies uh, in the UK by PwC. They have also been named as the top AI companies in the UK. So I wanted to discuss something with uh, Dr. Ramin and I wanted to update you all about uh, what has been happening. So Ramin, Bhai, I remember your company became one of the top five most precious healthcare startups. What do you think is the reason for holding such high position? Thank you, Raisubai, and a big thank you to BrainStation uh, on behalf of Cambridge Hardware. We are obviously very privileged to partner with BrainStation, and uh, we uh, wish this to continue for a lot longer. In answer to your question, the, the whole impetus for this came by from uh, my background in clinical medicine and application of AI technology. And I think the real reason why we've been uh, very successful in a very short period of time is because we've been very focused on what the user experience and what the clinical output is. You see a lot of companies, they try and do too many things and they don't, they lose the focus. For us, it has always been about providing the most robust, easy and fast real-time access uh, than anyone else. So that's all that we really focus on and then using all of the technology in terms of our wearable, which is a unique wearable, and to make the whole platform safe, easy to use, and secure. Right. Okay. So uh, actually your project uh, looks really interesting. Can you describe more about the project, actually what it does and how it does um, stuff like that uh, so that uh, our audience can learn more about it? Sure, sure. So the device um, essentially was something that uh, I had developed uh, as a prototype almost mm -hmm. a year ago, but we quickly adapted where we made it into a manufacturable uh, device in a very short period of time. What it is, it's the world's only uh, real-time multi-lead ECG device. And what I mean by that is currently you have devices where you use your finger or you can like uh, have on your wrist, but it's not accurate onto what's happening to your heart e EKGs. And so what we're doing with this is using that, we are using in real time, the person using the device not only gets a result, an output, but more importantly, it is streamed directly to your physician via our platform anywhere in the world. So examples are, if you're a patient in the UK or even in Bangladesh, Will you consent to your physician to uh, look at your data? And only once you've consented, they can log on to our platform and they will see it in less than one second delay of what's happening in terms of the ECG. Wow. And so it's technologically, uh, that's been a big hurdle. So we have a lot of IP on that space where it's not really dependent on your um, 4G network or it doesn't even require... 5G network. The whole issue is how do we transfer so much data in real time has been a real first. Okay. So 
uh, so I understand that uh, artificial intelligence based uh, compression also is applied here so that uh, the uh, so that without a lot of data transmission or the, all the necessary key parts of the data can be transferred, right? That's right. So there has been a lot of parsing of the data, but without losing what is clinically relevant. Okay. What we are doing, unlike other companies, we use one beat to beat variation. So one beat of a heartbeat on an yeah. EEG, we break down into 2,500 individual plots. And yeah. that essentially is streamed out. And the machine learning component has been developed so that not only are you getting uh, in a traffic light system, problem, normal, uh, unsure because of uh, any artifact, we've managed to get the noise to signal ratio to such a level that even with motion artifact, we can give you an underlying uh, process. Okay, okay. That, that sounds really exciting. I, I think that this has great potential to actually revolutionize uh, the healthcare industry. Uh, can you focus a little bit about that, how, how it is going to revolutionize the total healthcare industry? I mean, like, I really feel excited to be part of this, uh, honestly speaking. I mean, uh, uh, being part of a, a, a ECG process uh, and the healthcare, I mean, this is amazing because I, I mean, when I look at Bangladesh, uh, all the remote areas, all the villages where yeah. this this device can actually revolutionize the healthcare process, this is, uh, I, I think uh, this is going to change the total, uh, total industry. Can you please uh, shed some light on that? And, and, you know, there's a very good case point that you mentioned, uh, Raisul, is, you know, being a Bangladeshi myself, you know, being a Dhanmundi boy, mm -hmm. I saw from, you know, how the, tra the whole growth of Dhaka as a city yeah. over the years has been. But if you look at the majority of the population and use of healthcare, right. is still, we're still, although Bangladesh has one of the best, if not the best in the world of public health and remote area health, the actual diagnostics and the actual processes require camps of specialized doctors to go to villages, to go to rural areas, to give access to those very rural uh, patients. What we are trying to say is that diagnostic is now freely available just mm -hmm. through the device and having a mobile phone. So the right. diagnosis is there, the monitoring is there, and so what you're trying to do is you're actually cutting down on that process of needing to have constant camps or taking people out from the city and putting that specialist input into the villages and that areas for yeah. the long term. What we're saying is how do we screen patients? How do we screen patients long term, longitudinally? This was the real uh, idea for this. And in rural areas, not just in Bangladesh, if you look across the world, United yeah. States, UK, for example, if yeah. you're not in the big cities, right. there is something called a postcode lottery. It depends how close you are to that big hospital, what your treatment will be. If you're in the middle of the hills and you only have a, a general hospital, then right. that is very different from being in, say, in a specialist hospital in Dhaka. We, we know that happens. Yeah. So what this was saying is, look, if you are in any rural area, you should get the same amount of attention in terms of diagnostic capability and healthcare than someone who's living next to Dhaka Medical College, right? right? So right. that was the difference. But to have that monitoring was a big problem because if you look at devices, and this was one of my own personal, and I'm very proud of that, is to make a device that is applicable for developing world as well as developed world. The easiest thing to do is what people do is say, this is a very big technological um, breakthrough. We will hike up the price. Right. What we have done is done the reverse. It's saying, oh, we've managed to solve this technology, keep yeah. the price to a manufacturing price. Right. Because our goal is not to make like you have to have one device and that will up the price by five or tenfold. Our goal mm -hmm. is to give accessibility. And so access to be able to do that, we worked very tirelessly and we're even working even more now to give access through keeping the cost low. Right. Okay, so that's the main point. A lot of things and, you know, I'm really, you know, I wish that we can get some support from local government, 
from national governments. We've already had some interest in some governments in Africa. Hopefully that can be translated in areas like in Bangladesh and Southeast Asia, where that demand is not because we're selling a product. What we're trying to do is to empower people so they can then use that device themselves. So the specialist is not replaced. The specialist job is made easier, but for the patient, they get the best quality at all times. Absolutely, absolutely. Now we we are really happy to be part of it. Um, although I uh, I mean uh, we uh, we did only the mobile application. All the machine learning part is implemented by you. But uh, even even uh, being able to help on the mobile application, we are really grateful actually uh, toward you that uh, we got a chance to work on this amazing project. No, and, so, and, and the reason why, uh, right, so I'll be very honest with, you know, our viewers may not know, what really impressed me about Brain Session and with the way you uh, uh, may move forward with Brain Session, right, so our mm-hmm. focus is Cambridge Hardware came from academic institutions, right? All mm-hmm. of our founders come from the University of Cambridge. Similar mm-hmm. to you, you are a Buet graduate. You appreciate what the actual technological and computer science uh, problems are. Now, this is very important for companies. What, and as Bangladesh grows and the ICT sector grows, you're Mm -hmm. getting a lot more companies. You have 800 plus ICT companies already, right? And so if you look at that, the real definable and the companies that do well in an export market, those that uh, expand out, are companies who just don't say, look, I can implement like this or I can implement like this. Do we need innovation and innovative companies? And I think this is the push that I wanted to get across to, uh, to all future ICTs. And, you know, even with your help in uh, brain station is that we're able to innovate new interactions, new processes, new computer science, machine learning algorithms. If we can innovate that, then Bangladesh will not just be as an outsourcing. It will be an innovative yeah. point. Right, because what we don't want to be is a situation where you're just being outsourced for work just because of the labor costs. What we want is the quality is so good, the quality is innovative, that is the long-term benefit for the country because then more companies will think, look, they're not just giving us what other people are doing, they're making solutions. And I think that's what I really liked with Brain Station and with your uh, actual ethos there, Raisul, I have to say, you know, it requires the leadership at the top to appreciate that. So I'm very grateful to you that we share, uh, we both share, like with Cambridge and you with Brain Station, that the, the focus has to come from the actual underlying basic computer science and the other technology. So we're always doing a lot of research and development, and I, I applaud you for continuing to do that. Sure, sure. Thank you. So, in fact, uh, in fact, you'd be uh, um, happy to know that you actually inspired us. And uh, with with Buet, we have already started a, a research, uh, and uh, there um, there we are working on how to compress the data of X-ray, uh, so that uh, with a very small amount of data, X-ray uh, can be sent from rural areas to the doctor, and doctor. Uh, can see uh, what is the problem there. Uh, And uh, already uh, there are some research on identifying uh, in the uh, X-ray. So where is the difference? Where is the problem? But identifying and uh, defining the ECG process, I mean, uh, finding out where is the problem, that is amazing work that you have done. Uh, So and and, uh, so you have inspired us and now we are uh, building um, couple of, uh, we currently have two machine learning teams working on two different projects. So really, really happy actually that uh, uh, that we have uh, been able to work with you and uh, uh, and learning from you. No, thank you, Raisul. Like, and, and, and you'll be happy to know that um, I have also personally kept our academic tries with uh, Buet, especially the computer science, some of our collaborators, my own personal collaborators with them. Our next generation that I will tell you uh, is we have now developed a system whereby we can encode the whole uh, electronic health record into a DNA sequence. Okay. Okay. So so what this means, this is also a first, uh, and we will be publishing that paper very soon, 
What that means is now when you look at your x-ray, when you look at the doctor's prescription, the whole computer is looking at it in terms of zeros and ones. Okay. However, to, if you, that's a lot of data to carry. But right. now when you're going around and we're looking at the genome and sequencing our whole DNA, we're able to take all of that information and convert it into DNA actual scripts. Okay. And that DNA is being stored. So now the future will be essentially you're going and you're sequencing your own DNA, but also your medical records are within that. Okay. Okay. Wow. So that is, a, the, I think, for the next... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we have some other, uh, other tricks coming up from there. And, and this is what I would really encourage you uh, is, you know, we'd be happy to have more research and development with BrainStation as well. And so that, you know, we can, we'd love to see the implementation. That's the key point. A lot of research is done. And you see it will go in big papers, but it never gets translated. We believe that the research is very important, but also to translate that so people can use it is also very important. Absolutely. So thank you, Ramin Bhai. It was really nice talking with you uh, and uh, Dr. Agensil. Thank you, Raisul. And uh, we wish uh, all of our viewers uh, a very happy forthcoming uh, Ramzan is coming. And we hope to have more better interactions. Thank you. Thank you.